Uh, how do you put up with Bob every day? That's that's Austin Bonsell's question. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, what up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Trying to be quiet here. I'm a little excited. Dad and I, we just pulled up here to this beautiful little pond to do some magnet fishing. And um, right when we pulled up, I stopped, and my eyes automatically were glued to a certain bird. There is uh, there's some oddity birds here but there are snow geese here still in kansas and some very odd ones some rosses uh a blue snow goose that i thought was a uh blue ross at first turns out i don't think he is we need to get him in the big lens and uh see what he looks like up close but this little see yep see right here we got a farm duck farm duck but that right there that third white goose that is not a farm duck We'll get to that here in a minute, but we're at this little public pond here. Hot spot for magnet fishing, but also a hot spot for uh, odd birds here in the spring, obviously. That was the first goose I saw, a little Ross snow goose. Look at him prancing around. Dude, you are lost. Where are you going? You should be up north like Alberta by now, dude. Goodness. We'll go check out his buddy here in a minute. Uh, there's another snow goose here at first. I couldn't really tell. It kind of looks like a blue Ross, but we'll go look at him here in one second. Look at that. What a beauty. Trying to be quiet though. Check out who we got with us as well. Old Frederick. Well, hi there, old Frederick. What are you doing, buddy? Can't let you out because you'll go chasing the birds, man. He would too. I guarantee it. I let him out. We ain't going to be filming no more birds. But I'm going to put on the big uh, lens. I'm going to be talking to the mic. We're going to walk around. I'm going to go try to get some footage uh, of this blue. He is an absolute gorgeous blue snow goose. Cannot believe he's still here. It is uh, March, April 22nd today. <laughs> Check that guy out though. That is the goose that caught my eye. Is that a Ross? Tell me, is that a Ross or not? That's a blue interface snow goose, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get any closer than this. Well, I'm trying to get closer to him, but uh, he ain't having it. What a beauty. I would say that he is just an adult uh, interface blue snow goose, but nonetheless, what are you doing in Kansas? Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera still, y'all. Now we can get a better look at him. Pretty close now. Definitely not a Ross. Young. He's just a younger uh, interface blue snow goose. Good looking bird though. Good looking bird. Well, <laughs> let's go Fred. Come on now. Let's go. We got to go up to the house. It is the next day and uh, we're heading up to the house to meet the wife. She just got home from work. And we have some questions to ask her. Uh, for a lot of years, basically the entire lifespan of the YouTube channel, I have had all of my fellow dudes, bros, husbands, boyfriends, always ask me the same question. Bobby, A, how do you uh, get your wife to let you hunt so much? And B, how in the world uh, does she let you spend the amount of money on duck hunting and goose hunting gear? Because we all know it's expensive. So we got a handful of questions that I asked y'all. I asked y'all, what do you want to ask my wife? What are some of the questions? And uh, you guys responded on Instagram with some awesome questions. I literally wrote down all of the best ones. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna ask her. I'm sure some of the answers are gonna be quite entertaining. <laughs> well, here we are. We decided to come back here in the shop. Dude, that's my chair. What are you doing in my chair? Taking over? Testing it out. Taking over the channel or something? The queen's throne. <laughs> okay. First off, y'all know my wife Beth, if you haven't yet. This is Beth Guy. Yes, our last name is Guy. That's one of the most asked questions I get. What? Shocking. My last Shocking. name is also Guy. One of the most asked questions I get is, Bobby, is your last name really Guy? In fact, it is. Um, so I've wrote down probably... 
10, 12, 13, wow. 15 questions that people ask quite a bit. Okay. Uh, the first one, what is, let's start with this one. What is Beth's job? Um, I'm a nurse practitioner in OBGYN, so see women and pregnant women, women of all ages. Yep. Nurse practitioner, She's a, she is a nurse practitioner, OBGYN. A uh, nurse practitioner, if you don't know what it is, it's basically right underneath a doctor. Kind of yeah. goes doctor, nurse practitioner, so on and so forth. All right, so then we'll just start from the top. Uh, how do you put up with Bob every day? That's that's Austin Bonsell's question. <laughs> Good question from Austin. Um, you know, it's we've been together for a long time, so you're i don't know you're what i'm difficult but you learned how to deal with me no i mean i think we mesh pretty well we're pretty opposites so if you know if ever he's having an on moment and i'm having an off moment or vice versa we kind of match each other in that way but right you're not always as flamboyant as you are on yeah maybe flamboyant's a bad word no just like he's not colorful. really zealous all the time like he is on I camera. like making my videos that's for sure dealing with yeah. the stressors of life I'm another human being out yeah. here and, and that's what she gets to experience all the time um, I'm frustrated sometimes um, but my deal is that I don't like to show my frustration or when I'm when I'm uptight yeah. about something I don't like to put it on there that's not why you guys are here and that's I'm not gonna put my emotions on there so everybody has her ups and downs uh, throughout their week and their day. But most uh, of the time you make everything pretty lighthearted and I joking try. around well, the house. I'm busy and so. it takes a lot, this all, all this going on, it takes a lot of my attention and I've never been a business owner and, and like I've told a lot of y'all, dreams are awesome and all but you gotta work for them and then when they're in, yeah. their, in your lap to deal with them, it can become a lot. So, yeah. moving on, what do you think about the lodge and the guide service Sandhill Flyway? Um, I'm excited for it. It's it's crazy because we talked about this. I mean, like, what was it even? Maybe three years ago, or maybe even two years ago, and it was like our five or ten year plan. Right. To have a lodge one day, and um, you know where it would be or what it would look like, and so I'm excited to see it coming to life, and excited to see you putting, you know, your time and dedication into it, and. So one thing about it is it's it, it. It, it, having a guide service. We're going to be up and running for a uh, minimum three solid months. So minimum. And that's going to just pre preparing for that and then catering to paying clients. Mm -hmm. Every day that goes on, I learn, I learn a little bit more about it. And it's a lot to take on. And she, yeah. that's a good question because she has to deal with a lot of that stress that comes with it from me. She's my, she's my brick wall that I get to lean on a lot and ask for advice and they've helped me talk talk this through and what's the best idea for this and that. So we're a team when it comes to Sand Hill Fly. We're just like we're a team with these videos. We, yeah. We're a team with her school. That's why she has the job she does now. It took us eight to ten years to get her done with school and she's got her done and look where we are. So uh, moving on, what's your opinion on Bobby spending all the money on gear? like duck hunting because we all know how expensive duck and goose hunting is it's very expensive um you know it's, it's funny because i was thinking about that question if people asked me what i thought about you know duck hunting and everything and you know a long time ago seven years ago or so when we didn't you know have much and it was a lot to just spend i mean you couldn't really even afford like wow. sick up gear or, you know oh, I mean, no, way. Going to no way walmart and you know i think everyone has to start somewhere so just do what you can and you stay within your limit and you don't have to have the biggest and baddest and coolest of anything no. to be able to get your job done or you know what you want to get done well i can what I do can, i think about spending all the money yeah the, the money that's where i was going to go it's like even before where we're at now where we you know have a little bit of extra money that doesn't hurt the bank account yeah. back when i would spend two hundred dollars i remember buying a one of the most expensive mojos that came out and it was like a hundred mm -hmm. 120 120 bucks or something for the whole gigama rig that hurt us back then and, yeah. and that but that was before the channel too and that was before it became uh, a job now and you know so it, it balances itself out because then you're investing into your, right, your, your business and right. your company and now when i buy decoys exactly now they're different. for my job so yeah. that that helps it out you know what i mean next one why do you let him oh it's the same question why do you let him buy so many decoys that's like always a question why do you have so many decoys here in kansas you have to have a bunch to do the field hunts 
Yeah, but you didn't always. I so didn't I have think them. Maybe people are watching now and they're like, well, how did you get all this? Well, like if you go back even oh, a long time ago, I mean, you had a trailer full of like buddies before, that went in yeah, and got Before the YouTube channel, way before we were doing this. Yeah. 10 years before the YouTube channel ever was even I thought of. I can remember of. like one, it was like Christmas time of winter, like many years ago. And Bobby, you know, was talking to his friends and I think he had to put in like a thousand dollars or something going towards all the lot. decoys. And I was just like, holy moly you know that was a lot of money and yeah that like and a it, lot was, of you, it was shared from everybody. it was and that's so why i tell idea. you guys a lot find a hunting group you know find a hunting group buddy up trust each other don't backstab each other put in each other's money trust each other and be a team that way you can have more decoys for yeah. a little less cost yeah moving on fred's sitting right by the mic going <laughs> He's waiting for a direction. Jiminy Christmas. Okay. Do do? Next question. Well, this is a good one. And you have to be honest about it too. What okay. does she hate most about Bobby's hunting? Are we, okay. Are we talking about like your job or hunting? Cause I, well, I sometimes... think this is not about me. This is about men. This whole video is about men getting their wives to let them hunt more, dude. So, I'm being honest then. so um be honest about what do you hate most about my hunting i can guarantee so, you i know the answer is the time being well, away not just you know. that but i think as a as a woman it's almost like a little bit of envy in that we're moms and you know we don't get much time away to just go do something for ourselves. and so i think it's that it's like you know these guys you know you guys have your hobbies and you're like, okay, I'm going hunting, and it's just not even really a question. The guys just have their plan, and that's what they do. And then the woman, you know, you're just like, well, okay. So, I mean, not that you don't do this, but I think it's a great thing or, you know, idea or just put it in the back of your mind that, you know, this time that you're spending away, your wife or your girlfriend or whoever would probably appreciate the notion of just being like hey why don't you go spend a couple hours and right. go get your nails done or right. go to target and walk around or do whatever it is that you want to do to just have like a second have a have some girl time and do something that you also enjoy right right so. and i think that um now with everything going on and, and having kids this is a this is a i get a lot of questions guys with girlfriends saying my girlfriend literally doesn't want me to hunt anymore she you know, pretty much just don't want me to hunt anymore. She's ruining hunting for me. This, my response to that isn't going to be, well, go get you a new girlfriend. That's not the thing. Is is maybe just like she said, maybe um, if you would just surprise her by going and getting her hair done, or taking her out for dinner one night and spending the time with her, or just saying, hey, babe, you go do something that you want to. Uh, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. I'm bad about that because again, I'm busy all the time. A lot, a lot of people are out there, but. I've been bad about that. I've been guilty about it a lot of times. Just not, just not sitting back and going, babe, go do what you want, you know. So that's a big part. Share leisurely time back and forth. When she can go do something, by goodness, go do it because she she stays home and watches the kids uh, a lot of times when I'm out doing what I want to do, which is now my job. So. I think that's a big thing too is people go man bobby i'd love to be you to to hunt every day of my life and this and that it's a job it becomes a job just like mm -hmm. anything else and and andrew flair told me one thing uh when i started this he said bobby you're gonna do it enough to where you're gonna have to make your hobby your job and that transition when you when you experience it for the first time you really start hating it and two years ago i went through that transition where I wasn't we happy. All, we all did. I was, yeah, we all went through it because it was like, oh, it was so much and we were getting smothered and we just blew up and everything fell back into place. And, and, um, being a business owner, being, uh, coming off of being a blue collar and clocking in, it was just a learning experience. I'd never been a business owner. I had never managed my own time before. Yeah. So it was a lot to take on. Uh, Jacob says, <laughs> Jacob says, just stay single, LOL. <laughs> hey, if that works for you and you get to do what you want, by goodness, do it. There you go. Uh, how long have you been a nurse? Um, well, I've been, I was a nursing assistant, so like a CNA when I was 16, and then that's all I've ever done. I was a CNA, and then I went to nursing school. I got my um, LPN when I was 21, and then 
or maybe 22 and then I got my RN the next year when I was 23 so I've been an RN for six years yep and a so, nurse practitioner for so, three months so yeah basically long story short since you're about 17 18 years old you're a nurse assistant no 16. CNA 16 16 to 29 however many years that is yeah <laughs> most of my life next question I know that we already read that one we need to know what's the magic word bobby uses to get permission to hunt so much now is that permission from the farmers or permission oh. from the wife oh, i'm going to chalk it up one. as permission for the wife well okay i was going to say about permission from the farmer is that maybe some people know and you can just tell by knowing bobby but he's a very personal person and he likes to get to know people and talk with them and develop relationships and have that rapport with people and so when he's, you know, asking farmers or whatever for the, you know, permission, you're doing it on a be personable level. And yeah, Bobby's just always had that way about him that he can connect with people. And right, just people. as person. far as I go, the magic word um, is usually like a Starbucks or something. Yeah, <laughs> well, if you bring me a Starbucks, I'll let you go hunt. Well, it usually it works her. out great. I mean, when I was in school and you would go hunting and he would get home at like, you know, I wasn't working. So I was just home with the kids and doing school. You get home at like 9 a.m. after you went hunting with my Starbucks. And I was like, this is great. Yep. I'm really fine with it. <laughs> yep, that's the Starbucks is the magic word. It's the first Starbucks since quarantine. Oh, really? Yeah. Next question. Uh, how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel Bobby hunts for a living? Do you love it or hate it? And and I think that that's, that's the same question that we've kind of been asking. But the way that different. they're asking it is like, the whole killing of animals yeah. i'm bringing animals home maybe our kids our kids know daddy's job they can't wait to go hunting um mm -hmm. so, so yeah. it's it's kind of funny because i you know i didn't grow up with guns and i'm not even bobby will be like babe let's go shoot and i'm like no i just especially if the kids are around i get super nervous about it i just never was around guns she's and not I never had that education like she's not com naturally comfortable no. with guns but we've been handling them more the last year and i'm not year. like i've never killed an animal and nah, i don't she doesn't, think i'm super she no keen interest. to go hunting and do that, that was that was actually one of the questions i think i skipped it was when are you going to go hunting with bobby she will go and run a know. camera she loves doing that taking pictures video she is a she's a photographer uh, but killing stuff, that's just not up her alley. She doesn't, yeah. it's not enthusiastic for her. It's not something that she hasn't running through her veins, you know, mm -hmm. so. But as far as like the killing of animals and things, I think it's important if you do kill an animal, then, you know, you're respecting that animal and you're doing with the animal what you should and it's not just being thrown around or. Right, I, and uh, to. Disrespected to, in that way. I mean, to me, it's still life and <clears throat> yeah, it's your job and it's a, you know, game necessarily. Right. But it's still important to have that respect and teach that to our kids growing up because Bodie, he's very interested in guns and what daddy does. He always wants to go hunting with daddy every day. Daddy, I want to go hunting with you. And so it's important to me that Bobby, you know, and I pass, pass that along to our kids that, okay, hunting is, you know it can be fun but it's also a very responsible thing yeah it's a very dangerous thing yeah. just like uh you know the all my hunts how many hunts have you guys watched with 10 guys and 10 guns lined up in an a-frame and one falls over because the wind shakes it's a dangerous thing uh hunting safety for okay, myself course. for my peers is number one i mean it and makes then, me even nervous to you know Bobby going on, I mean, hunting nearly like five or six days a week, especially during the season. And you're going with new people yeah. and, you know, it's so it's be scary a, to think about all those. There's a lot of safety to factors to always keep in mind. Anything can happen. Yeah. And another thing to hit on that, the, the respect for the animals. I want to, I've been wanting to talk about this. I've been watching TikTok, and especially during last season and stuff. And there's, I see a lot of young guys, old or young, I don't care. Uh, you'll get a wounded bird and you'll play with it alive in the blind or you'll, uh anything like that that's so disrespectful for one don't do that for two uh even catching a live bird and releasing it or wringing its neck basically not wounded just going there and grabbing it not shot that's illegal you can't do that so uh one thing about respecting the animals that you're taking that you're hunting guys come on we uh 
we already have enough activists and, and people that are against hunting and, and whatever and, and by handling wounded animals and making them talk or do doing just not it's cool not stuff, good. it's not good. And they, a lot of people have been doing it and I don't like it. I'm not blaming you individually, uh, but I gotta say, let's spread the good word. If you're in the blind and you see someone doing that, tell them to stop. Tell them to delete the video that they just took. Don't post that, don't spread that. That's, that's not what we need for the hunting community. That was my little rant and rave. Thank you for answering all 20 questions. I wanna end on um, you, you know, to help your wife or girlfriend or whoever be more keen about you going hunting is also, I mean, I know we touched on the time, but also just thinking about her and like, you know, the love language type thing. How do they see you giving time or how do they know mm -hmm. that you're thinking about them? So I think it's, individual for each relationship about how you can manage that and it's not right. just hunting i mean yeah I mean, it's, it's not anything. just hunting you know there's guys with with uh, guys men with hobbies whether you're a, you have a race car and you dirt track race and it takes up a ton of time and money doesn't matter what you do it's all the same it's how you respect and treat your woman whether it's your girlfriend your wife it needs to be a shared thing you can't just be selfish all the time you got to give your time back to them and you got to let them know you're th you're thinking of them man can't just go without texting them or not texting them back or being mean so and maybe include them maybe some of them want to be included yeah and i'm sure a lot of them want to go on the hunts if your girlfriend wants to go on the hunt take her mine not so much your you girlfriend know. doesn't want to go my girlfriend no you're my girlfriend again <sighs> well there you got it the secret my secret be fair uh relationships are just like a game man and it's, it's got to always be a fair game. And it's always got to be a loving game. If you're not sharing the love back and giving your time and attention to your wife, she's probably not going to be your wife or girlfriend. Uh, she's probably not going to be happy when you say you're going to go hunting for the second time in one week. So share in the relationship. Share your time. Share your love. Basically treat your wife, treat your girlfriend how you want to be treated. And she's going to let you do a lot more. But be sure to subscribe. We're coming at you guys with three to four videos every single week. And huge shout out to my notification squad. If you haven't hit the little notification bell down there, do it. It'll notify you when your boy uploads. But thank you all for being here. If you have any video ideas that you want me to do, drop a comment down below and let us know. But until next time. Peace. I've been getting laid back, baby, you should know that. I don't need your criticism, pessimism